Today, in many countries around the world, it is Father's Day. Many sons and daughters will buy presents or take their fathers out for dinner. Actually, Father's Day is only about 100 years old. But there are many stories, powerful stories, about fathers and sons which are much, much older. Today, I would like to tell you one of these stories. Today, I would like to tell you about the son of the sun. Today's story comes from Greece, a country in southeast Europe. Do you know anything about Greece? It has a long and interesting history. There are many old buildings you can visit. And today's story is an ancient Greek myth. Ancient means very old, thousands of years old. Greek means from Greece. And a myth is an old story about gods and heroes. Every culture has its own myths. Now, to understand our story today, we need to understand a little about science and geography. So, let's check our knowledge. I have three questions for you. One, what is the shape of the earth? Two, how many oceans does the earth have? And three, how does the sun move across the sky? Okay, let's check our answers. What shape is the earth? Well, of course, the earth is spherical. It is a sphere. Well, it's almost spherical. It's a little bit fatter in the middle. How many oceans are there? Well, most people would say that Earth has five oceans. The Arctic Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Southern Ocean. How does the sun move across the sky? Well, of course, it doesn't move across the sky. The Earth moves around the sun. And as the Earth moves, it also spins once every 24 hours. This gives us our days and our nights. Simple questions, right? You probably learnt all of this at school. But of course, these are all modern answers. And today's story is not a modern story. It's an ancient Greek myth. And the ancient Greeks had a very different culture and very different beliefs. So try to answer these questions again. But this time, imagine that you are living in ancient Greece 3,000 years ago. How would you answer these three questions? What shape is the Earth? Well, the Earth is flat. It's disc-shaped. It's a bit like a CD. How many oceans does the Earth have? Well, the Earth has one ocean, and the god of the ocean is called Oceanus. The ocean surrounds the Earth. How does the sun move across the sky? Well, the sun is actually a burning chariot. A chariot is a bit like an ancient car, but it's pulled by horses. And the sun chariot is pulled across the sky from east to west every day by four flying horses. The sun god, Apollo, rides the chariot and keeps the horses under his control. Now, there were many ancient Greek gods and goddesses. But for this story, 
we just need to know about two of them. The first god is Zeus. Zeus is the king of the gods. He is responsible for all of the world and the gods. He's kind of like the boss or the CEO. Now Zeus is very powerful. He can throw thunderbolts at his enemies. And he is the father of Apollo. And this is Apollo. Apollo is the sun god. He drives the sun chariot across the sky every day. And he lives in the palace of the sun. Apollo is very handsome with golden hair. He's also very busy. He's also the god of healing and the god of music and the god of truth. So today's story is called The Son of the Sun. The gods in today's story are Zeus, the king of the gods, and Apollo, the god of healing. We also have some important words. We have chariot, palace, stable, reins, control, thunderbolt, burn, and freeze. So stop the video now and make sure you understand these words and then try to guess what do you think happens in this story. Today, we live in a world of technology. We have smartphones and computers and robots. But long ago, in ancient Greece, sometimes the gods would come down to earth. They would talk with people, they would spend time with people, and sometimes they would have children with people. Well, one day, Apollo was sitting in his palace. He lived in the golden palace of the sun, and he was sitting on his chair made of rubies and diamonds, and he was wearing his expensive purple clothes. When the doors of the palace opened, and a boy came into the palace. Now this boy, he was probably about 11 or 12 years old. He had golden hair. He was quite handsome, but he was definitely a boy. A boy, said Apollo. Boy, why are you here? Well, the boy walked forward and he said, my name is Phaeton and, and my, my mother says that you are my father. Really? Come here, boy. Let me have a look at you. Yes, yes. You could be mine, yes. You have my cheeks, you have my hair. Yes, Phaeton. I think you're my son. Why did you come here, Phaeton? Well, um, because, because at school, the, the other boys, they, they, they make fun of me. They say, your father is not Apollo. Your father is not a god. Your father is a fisherman. Your father is a farmer. And, you know, I wanted to find out if you are my father because you've never talked to me. You've never given me anything. Phaeton, I'm very sorry. You know, I've just been, been so busy. You know, I'm, I'm the sun god, I'm, I'm the god of culture, I'm the god of music, I'm the god of truth, but, but, but listen, listen, listen. I will give you a gift. Just ask me what you want, anything you want, and I promise you, I will give it to you. Anything, Father? Really? Anything? You, you promise? Yes, yes, of course, I, I promise, I'll give you anything. Well, if I make a promise, or... If you make a promise, maybe we can break our promise. But if a god makes a promise, they can't. And so Phaeton said, well then father, let me ride in your chariot. What? 
right to my chariot. What do you, what do you mean? Fa oh, yes, father, let me ride in the chariot of the sun. I want to ride it across the sky today. <laughs> no, 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 no. Phaeton, ask me for something else, anything else, gold, land, power. Father, you promised me, you promised me anything. No, Phaeton, you don't understand. No man can ride that chariot and <laughs> you are not a man. And in fact, no other god can ride that chariot. Not even Zeus, the king of the gods, can ride it. Please, ask me for something else. But all Phaeton would say is, Father, you promised me. Father, I want to ride the chariot. You're not going to break your promise, Father. Well, of course, Apollo couldn't break his promise. And so he led Phaeton to the stables, where he kept the horses. And when Phaeton saw the great horses that pull the sun chariot, he was very excited, but he was also a little bit nervous because these great horses, well, they were the biggest horses he had ever seen. And they were white in color, but their hair was like a burning orange. And when they stamped the ground, sparks would fly up. And when they breathed, flames would come out. They had fire in their eyes. Well, Apollo, he led his horses to the gates of the dawn. These are the gates that are open every day when the sun rises. And then Apollo went and got the sun chariot and he attached the chariot to the horses. Well, Phaeton jumped in to the chariot. He was very excited, but, you know, he looked kind of silly inside that chariot. You see, Phaeton, he was a little bit small for the chariot. He couldn't see over the horses and his arms were a little bit short. The, the reins were too long in his hands. Well, Apollo tried one more time. Phaeton. Please, come on, uh, come on. I, I, I've shown you the horses and I, I've shown you the chariot. You, you've stood in the chariot. Please, Phaeton, ask me for something else, anything. Phaeton, I'll, I'll come down to your school. I'll say hello to your friends, okay? Just, just please, don't do this. But Phaeton said, Father, Father, you promised. And, and I promised too. I'm going to ride the chariot of the sun today. Well, what could Apollo do? He tried to give advice to his son. Okay, Phaeton, so you're going to raid the chariot. Uh, okay, so please listen to my advice. The horses, they do this journey every day. Every day, they pull the sun chariot from east to west. So they, they know the way. So Please, just, just hold on to the reins. Don't try to turn left or turn right or go up or go down. Just, just hold on to the reins and let the horses pull you across the sky. Okay, Father, okay. Don't, don't worry about me. I, I'll be okay, Father. Well, at that moment, the gates of dawn began to open. It was time for the sun to rise. And the four great flying horses began to walk towards the gates. And then they began to run. And then they jumped up and flew through the gates. And they pulled the sun chariot up behind them. Wow. Well, up, up, up the chariot went. Phaeton was holding tightly to the reins. And, well, you know, it was, it was so much fun. It was so exciting for Phaeton. The wind was blowing in his face. Oh, this is easy. I don't know what father was worried about. This is so much fun. While the chariot continued to travel up, up, up into the sky. And Phaeton looked down and he saw India. Well, he'd never seen India before. This was amazing. And the chariot continued its journey across the sky. 
and soon Phaeton was over Greece. Oh, oh, well, that, that's my school. Oh, there are, there are my classmates. I should go down and see them. Well, this was a terrible mistake. When the horses felt this weak little boy try to move the reins, they became confused. They started fighting each other. They started moving left and moving right. They started moving up and moving down. They were out of control. Phaeton tried to control them again. He tried to pull on the reins, but it didn't work. He tried to call their names, but he didn't even know their names. And soon the horses started to go down, 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 down towards the earth. And they brought the hot, burning sun chariot towards the earth. And soon the earth began to burn. Lakes dried up. Forests were burnt up. Rivers ran away. Cities were destroyed. And Phaeton thought the sun was going to crash into the earth. But at the last minute, the horses, they started to go up again. Up, up, up. High into the sky. Too high. The sun chariot set fire to the sky. The sky began to burn. And far below the chariot, the earth began to grow cold. The north of the earth began to freeze over and become ice. Well, Phaeton, he, he wasn't trying to control the chariot anymore. He was just holding on to the reins. His eyes were closed. His legs were shaking. And then the horses, they went down again. They went down, 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 down towards the earth. And then they went up, 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 up. And down, 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 down. And up, 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 up. And down, 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 down. Wow. The people on the earth, they were desperate. They thought they were all going to die, all burnt up by the sun. So everybody prayed. And they all prayed to Zeus. And they said, Zeus, help us, save us. And the other gods, they came to Zeus too and they said, Zeus, you are the king of the gods. Look at this. The world will be destroyed. You must do something. And so Zeus looked out and he saw Phaeton in the chariot of the sun. And he saw how the chariot went up and went down and went up and went down again. And Zeus, he reached over for his thunderbolt. And he threw that thunderbolt at Phaeton. And the stories say that the thunderbolt hit Phaeton right here on the side of the head. And Phaeton, when he was hit by that thunderbolt, he fell out of the chariot and he fell down, 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 down to earth. He fell into a river, dead. Well, once Phaeton had fallen out of the chariot, the horses calmed down. They regained control. They found the way again. And they managed to travel towards the ocean. And the people on earth and the other gods, they were very happy because they weren't going to die. They weren't all going to burn in the heat of the sun. But of course, Apollo, Apollo's son Phaeton had died. And Apollo had not been a good father in his life. But when Phaeton died, Apollo was so upset. He took off his purple clothes and he put on simple black clothes. And you know, people say the next day, Apollo refused to drive the sun chariot across the sky. And on that day, the only light came from the fires that were burning on earth. So, that's the story. Phaeton goes to find his father, Apollo, who he has never seen. Apollo is very sorry promises to give him anything. <laughs> it's 
So young Phaeton asks to ride the sun chariot across the sky. Apollo can't break his promise. Phaeton rides the chariot, but it goes out of control and it goes up and down, burning the earth. And Zeus, the king of the gods, throws his thunderbolt at the chariot and kills Phaeton. In the end, Apollo loses his son. So what do you think? Whose fault is it that Phaeton died? Maybe it's Phaeton's fault. He did want to ride in the chariot, and that's a very stupid idea. Maybe he should have listened to his father. But maybe it's Apollo's fault. Apollo didn't see Phaeton one time in 12 years. Maybe it's the horse's fault. The horses did go out of control. They went up and down. And maybe it's Zeus's fault. Zeus threw the thunderbolt that killed Phaeton. Or maybe it's no one's fault. Maybe these things will always happen sometimes with young boys. Well, whatever you think, Phaeton has actually had a big impact on the world today. So let's learn about that impact. These three places in the pictures are all connected with the story of Phaeton. However, before we can learn more about this, we need to learn their names. So stop the video now and try to match the three pictures with the three place names. Okay, let's check our answers. So number one is C, the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is a really big desert in North Africa. It's very hot and very dry. Number two is A, the Milky Way Galaxy. A galaxy is a big group of stars and our sun is inside the Milky Way galaxy. And number three is B, the North Pole. The North Pole is the very cold area in the north of the Earth. It's covered with ice and snow. Now all of these places are connected to the story of Phaeton. So listen to part of the story again and then try to answer this question. How were these places formed? How were they created? And soon the horses started to go down, 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 down towards the earth. And they brought the hot, burning sun chariot towards the earth. And soon the earth began to burn. Lakes dried up. Forests were burnt up. Rivers ran away. Cities were destroyed. And Phaeton thought the sun was going to crash into the earth. But at the last minute, the horses, they started to go up again. Up, up, up high into the sky, too high. The sun chariot set fire to the sky. The sky began to burn. And far below the chariot, the earth began to grow cold. The north of the earth began to freeze over and become ice. Okay, well, let's check our answers. So the Sahara Desert this was formed when the chariot of the sun fell towards the earth and set fire to the forests and dried up lakes and destroyed cities. This place is now called the Sahara Desert. And number two, the Milky Way Galaxy. 
Well, this was formed when the chariot of the sun rose up high and set the sky on fire. This area of the sky is now called the Milky Way galaxy. And number three, the North Pole. This area was formed when the chariot of the sun rose high into the sky. And it was so high that the north of the earth became cold and the sea froze. This place is now called the North Pole. As you can see, Phaeton's death had a great impact on the earth and on the sky. But of course, his death also had a great impact on his family and friends. So let's learn more about that. So now we're going to read some stories about Phaeton's friends and family after Phaeton died. And for each short story, I want you to think about these three questions. First, how did they react to his death? Second, what happened to them in the end? And third, what words come from these stories? So the first story is the story of Cygnus. So stop the video now, read his story, and answer the questions. Okay, let's check our answers. How did Cygnus react to his death? Well, Cygnus walked up and down, staring at the river. What happened to Cygnus in the end? Well, he was turned into a swan by Apollo. What words come from these stories? Well, in English, we have the word signet, which means a baby swan. The second story is the story of the Heliads. So, same thing. Read the short story and answer the questions. You can stop the video now. Okay, let's check our answers. So the Heliads were Phaeton's sisters. How did they react to his death? Well, they cried and cried and cried by the river that he fell into. What happened to them in the end? Well, the Heliads were turned into poplar trees and their tears became amber. What words come from these stories? Well, we have resin and amber. Now, there is one more word we can learn from those sad stories. You see, this is amber. Actually, it's not amber, look, it's my pen. But imagine this is amber. And the ancient Greek word for amber is electron. And you know, if you take some amber and you take, for example, a piece of cloth and you rub them together, what do you get? Well, you get electricity, of course. So the English word for electricity and also electric and electrical comes from the ancient Greek word for amber. Now, there's one more English word I want to show you about. This is called a phaeton. It's a carriage, kind of like a chariot, uh, but with four wheels, and it's pulled by horses. And this Phaeton carriage is an open carriage, so it has no windows or no roof, and it's light, fast, and quite dangerous. Phaeton carriages were very popular in England about 200 years ago. And this car is also called a Phaeton. It's an open car, again, no windows or roof, just like Phaeton's chariot had no windows or roof. And this car was popular about a 100 years ago, in, in the 1920s. 
and phaetons, they were still light and fast and quite dangerous. And this car is also called a phaeton. This is the Volkswagen phaeton. Volkswagen is a German company. And this car is very expensive. It's a luxury car. And actually, it's safe and it's heavy, but it can still go fast. Uh, this car was released in 2002. So you can see, over 200 years, we've had the Phaeton carriage, the Phaeton car, and the Volkswagen Phaeton. All have the same name, but they're all very different. Although Phaeton is dead, his name is still alive. I think Phaeton would be very happy to have a big, fast, expensive, powerful car named after him. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to leave you with a very short and very famous poem about Phaeton. This poem will probably be quite difficult for you. You probably need to use a dictionary or do some research online or maybe ask a teacher to find the meaning. But I think it's a good poem, so if you have time, I encourage you to read it and think about it. 